Erklärung dafür, was dieses Wetter verursacht hat. Meteorologists are at a loss to explain what is causing this weather and why it has taken five surprise. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. In California, the drought has now killed more than 102 million trees. The U.S. Forest Service said that an aerial study shows more than a 100% increase in dead trees across the state since 2015. Officials blame California's five-year drought and bark beetle infestations that can strike as a result. They reported finding 36 million more dead trees since May. The United States Agriculture Secretary says the massive die-off increases the risk of catastrophic wildfires. A truck carrying water arrives at a school in La Paz, Bolivia. A hard-hitting drought, the country's worst in 25 years, is affecting large portions of the country. Bolivia's Ministry of Education has called for schools like this one to close early to help prevent infection from spreading. Some 125,000 families have been affected. Most neighborhoods in the capital are getting water supplies just three days a week. Residents say they can barely make ends meet. We're getting water just for our consumption, this woman said. We can't even clean ourselves, much less wash our clothes. President Evo Morales, who visited drought-stricken regions, has made funds available to help alleviate the crisis. A state of emergency was declared earlier this week, which comes after more than half of the country's municipalities had declared their own drought emergencies previously. All right, listen to this one. This cold snap we've had over the last few days could be bringing an unwanted guest right into your home. It's a A late season storm in the Caribbean has been upgraded to a hurricane as authorities in Panama reported at least four people had been killed and several were missing. Heavy rains have triggered landslides trapping some beneath the mud. A child was killed when a tree fell on a car parked outside a school in the capital Panama City. 
The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Hurricane Otto is now blowing at about 120 kilometers per hour as it approaches Costa Rica and Nicaragua. With hurricane strength winds on their way, orders to evacuate coastlines have been issued in both countries. According to experts, it's rare for a storm of Otto's ferocity to make landfall so far south in the Caribbean. Now, something's a bit fishy in the Gilbert Canal. Have you seen this? Dead fish popping up everywhere near Elliott and Greenfield. Any given day, you might find a number of things floating in canals. But lately, people in Gilbert are finding something fishy. 50 to 100 dead fish floating on the, on the canal. After a viewer let us know about it, we called SRP, who maintains the canal, and they sent a biologist to get to the bottom of it. In a six and a half mile stretch of the canal, they found about 80 dead fish. Floating, dead, dead fish, yeah. It's very disturbing. According to SRP, something is killing only the white aimer fish, a non-native fish that SRP stocks the canals with. Because they're voracious weed eaters. They eat the weeds to keep the canals clean and that uh, improves uh, water flow and it saves water. The dead fish are now being pulled from the water and tested. SRP says the reason they're dying could be as simple as the change in the temperatures or the algae in the canal. But the water has been tested and is safe. There are no indications of any kind of, of, of um, chemicals or anything in there that uh, would be a affect the fish or be humans. We turn to Wall Street now, where the Dow has made history, and I want to get straight to our Jill Wagner at the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, Jill, uh, for those of us who wondered what 19,000 would look like, we found out. Yeah, that's right, Josh. And uh, there was a little bit of a cheer here on the floor of the Stock Exchange when the Dow hit 19,000 for the first time ever today. It opened at a record high, the Dow did. And it's been within 10 points above and below that 19,000 mark, but certainly history in the making. I should show you this hat here, down 19,000. One of the traders made this on Friday uh, when it looked like the market was going higher and higher. And today they broke out the hats for the first time. Very excited. So the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P 500, and the Russell 2000 all opened at all-time record highs this morning. That hasn't happened since December 31st, 1999. There are a bunch of factors. Mostly, though, this is the Donald Trump post-election rally. There's just a lot of optimism here on the floor. There's hope that he'll ease regulation on the financial industry and boost spending on infrastructure. Also, OPEC meets next week, and there's a lot of uh, expectation now that they will reach an agreement to cut oil production, and that would boost prices. So we've seen oil trading a bit higher, and that's given energy stocks a boost. Jack According to new research, hundreds of local police departments throughout the country 
have collectively spent at least $4.75 million to monitor protests and potential suspects on social media. Florida Department of Law Enforcement is allegedly among the top spenders. And China successfully launched the Tianlian IO4 satellite from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in southwest uh, Sichuan province. The satellite was uh, launched on a Long March 3C carrier rocket at 11.24 p.m. Beijing time. The satellite will join its uh, three predecessors to support a global network. And the network is expected to provide data relay, measurement and control services for China's manned spacecraft, labs and stations. You know, I, I began studying the topic of killing. I wrote the book on killing. Marine Corps Commandant's required reading after 15 years of war. Army and Air Force recommended reading. And when I began to become aware of how we teach soldiers in Copsicle, how, how we have to condition them right. to be able to pull the trigger, to overcome the resistance, we realize that video games doing the same things to the kids. For you to say that you're comfortable with fake news getting posted, that that's okay. Tucker, when what you know this is about, define fake that what for this me. is about, well, you can't define fake. Yes, you can. can. What this Lies. is about is Things left leaning mainstream media <laughs> blaming conservative media for losing the election, losing credibility, and losing readers. Their definition of fake news is anything that doesn't align with their leftist agenda. Freedom of speech is staring down the barrel of a gun loaded by a cancer of global interests that have laid claim to the last remaining fragments of the First Amendment of the United States of America. RT reports former Congressman Ron Paul revealed a list of fake news journalists he claims are responsible for bogus wars and lies about Hillary Clinton's chances of winning the election. Journalists from CNN, The New York Times, and The Guardian are included. According to the report on his website, Ron Paul Liberty Report, this list contains the culprits who told us that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and lied us into multiple bogus wars. Paul claims the the list is sourced and holds a lot more water than a list previously released by Melissa Zimdars, who is described by Zero Hedge as an ultra-liberal assistant professor of communications at Merrimack College. Zimdar's list in itself should be considered fake. A list containing actual fake news sites alongside true news gathering alternative view sites that utilize a system of dissecting the mainstream narrative and its long history of fake reporting. Reporting. Fake reporting is nothing new. Just ask Brian Williams. After a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. It did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in the air crews who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. With the loss of the globalist foothold and the quiet death of the smith munn Act in 2013, propaganda is being waged on all fronts. George Orwell said, Threats to freedom of speech, writing, and action, though often trivial in isolation, are cumulative in their effect and, unless checked, lead to a general disrespect for the rights of the citizen. Is the Constitution a living document, open to interpretation, or is it something that must be read strictly and adhered to regardless of the day? You know, Scott, that is the question that is asked constantly of judges. And so to talk about strict interpretation or living constitution, those are not words I use. And they're not words that I think have much meaning. The very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. Lies will pass into history. George Orwell. You know, when we first got in there and started looking around and didn't find anything, I see, you get that kind of sinking feeling that, uh-oh. And then... 
time went on, and then we got tips, you know, there, I'll never forget the tip that there was crates buried, you know, hidden in the Euphrates River. They found, maybe these are them, and they've sent frogmen in there, there's nothing there. In our age, there is no such thing as keeping out of politics. All issues are political issues, and politics itself is a mass of lies, evasions, folly, hatred, and schizophrenia. George Orwell. You have to represent all of the people, and the people have to believe that. You have to have the rule of law that applies to everyone, not just to some of the people. For those of you who are concerned about my using personal email, I understand. And I am sure they will reach the same conclusion they did when they looked at my emails for the last year. There is no case here. All the war propaganda, all the screaming and lies and hatred comes invariably from people who are not fighting. George Orwell. You're helping us to destroy ISIL, and we will destroy them. You're keeping us safe. The low-key announcement of additional troop deployments marked the 11th by the Obama administration in the last 27 months, each time ranging from 200 to 1,500, such that the total number of U.S. troops and advisors in Iraq will exceed 5,000 by the time the president leaves office. It is up to the individual, emboldened by the rights of a free press and the protection of the liberty passed down from the founders to control their own mind and their own destiny. Well, one religious leader is weighing in on the Trump presidency. The Dalai Lama spoke to reporters while visiting Mongolia. Asked for his reaction to Mr. Trump's victory, the Dalai Lama said he expects President Trump to differ from candidate Trump. Sometimes I feel during election, the candidates have more freedom to express. Now, once they're elected, having the responsibility, then, then they have to carry their vision. Yeah, whoops, according to the reality. So I know what he started out his presidency, pretty much the first words out of his mouth were, I want to be a president for all races and religions. Brian Lanza put out a statement last night denouncing all racism on behalf of the administration, as they've continually done. Today, he told the New York Times, I don't want any of this. Stop it. He looked in the camera in 60 minutes and said, cut it out. He's done this four times. If it were up to you, well, Anna, tell you what he needs left, to no, do let me finish. If it were up to you, Anna, or the leftist, he would spend every day of his presidency standing on top of Trump Tower with a megaphone saying, I am not a racist, but he's not going to do that. He's done it four times already. He's going to work for the American people, and he's not going to be baited into these traps you are trying to lay and the left are trying to Can lay. I say Fake news has become increasingly, maddeningly, disturbingly popular, especially on Facebook. The Pope endorsing Trump? Fake. Megyn Kelly fired for backing Hillary Clinton? Fake. Clinton linked to crimes committed by Anthony Weiner? Also fake. Some of these uh, pro-Trump websites in particular actually come from kids, from teenagers living in Macedonia. So you're saying that a bunch of Macedonian kids screwed millions of Americans over and got Trump elected. A bunch of Macedonian kids versus the enormous mainstream media machine? Those six giants that control 90% of American media, which almost 100% were behind Hillary Clinton. Hillary hit him on everything. She clearly managed to get under his skin. I think is the best speech yet. Trump is headed for a historic defeat. Could he actually win? No freaking way! <laughs> Oh no, you don't make up news intentionally. CNN didn't interview their super Hillary fan cameraman intentionally, and Fox's fake former CIA operative was just an honest mistake, fine. But misleading, misinforming, pulling out of context and propagating war, that's your intention for sure. Remember WMDs? We should have been more skeptical. Yes, you should have been, but lessons aren't learned. Yugoslavia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, ISIS, terrorists, or what do you call them? Moderate rebels? What you do is way more dangerous. Your real news starts wars, kills and displaces millions, and destroys entire regions. So fake news. Most can see that coming. It's the real news that needs a check. Well, the election will definitely be a big topic at a lot of Thanksgiving dinner tables across the country. Some social media users, though, say their political views have already gotten them disinvited from wow. Turkey Day festivities. Both Trump and Clinton supporters claim their posts online about the election have resulted in revoked invitations this year.
it is an historic announcement coming from the Vatican today as Pope Francis grants from now on that priests can absolve any woman who confesses to having an abortion. Pope Francis made the declaration in an apostolic letter as he concluded the extraordinary holy year of mercy. It extends indefinitely what had been a year-long act of grace for what the church calls a grave sin and that rank-and-file priests, not just bishops, can extend the act of forgiveness. Francis writing, there is no sin that God's mercy cannot reach and wipe away when it finds a repentant heart seeking to be reconciled. The South Korean headquarters of Samsung Group have been raided by prosecutors along with the offices of the country's National Pension Service. It's said to be in connection with the influence peddling scandal embroiling the country's president and her top advisors. The NPS is being investigated over its decision to approve an $8 billion merger involving two Samsung affiliates. The holidays are starting, but good cheer is in short supply. Christmas markets in Europe have tightened security, following U.S. travel warnings to its citizens over an increased threat of terror attacks at holiday venues. The organizer of one Berlin Christmas market says everyone's preparing. Danger can never be ruled out, but my hope is that our square is not the focus in Berlin. At least that's my hope. This Homeland Security Intelligence Analysis obtained by Fox News was sent to law enforcement after the new ISIS propaganda magazine called on its followers to use trunks as weapons to mirror July's mass casualty attack in East France. The White House spokesman said the president will receive his regular update. As usual, uh, the president will get a briefing from his national security team before the holiday uh, about uh, current threats uh, and about all the steps that are being taken. Uh, to mitigate and counter those threats. The U.S. State Department has warned its citizens of the increased risk of terrorist attacks in Europe over the holiday period. While European authorities have stepped up security at Christmas markets due to fears they may become a terror target, the travel advisory by the State Department said it remained concerned about the potential for further attacks, noting they've been carried out in Belgium, France, Germany and Turkey in the past year. Now, the European Parliament has adopted a resolution seeking to counteract propaganda by third parties, which places Russia and ISIL on the same footing in terms of perceived international threats. We are at war with Russia. We are on a collision course with each other, traveling faster than a jet fighter. Russia has tried to damage the EU. The enemy is pushing its narrative hard. The Kremlin wants to split Europe. It forces its information into our countries. What the Russians and extremists don't like is freedom. The Russia and ISIS share the same aim. They're toxic. We do stand on the edge of a great new era. We built this great industrial powerhouse. The whole idea of industrial capitalism in the West, government that was going to invest in infrastructure. It is a time for pathfinders and pioneers. What happened to the American century? The share of income that we put into infrastructure has gone down starkly. If you travel around the country, there's just not that much that's new. What happened to America's ideal of progress? All these things that have been established after the Great Depression fell apart. You'll see the whole streets are just closing down. A community that's undereducated, underemployed. Baltimore was a blue collar town. Now the air quality is wonderful because there's no industry here anymore. It's beyond life. Detroit had a population of about 2 million people in 1950. It's now a little over 600,000. 
huge percentage of their budget goes to the military. This is an economy that's based to a large degree on killing people. If you were to cut the military budget in half, we'd have a depression in the United States. So they're literally working full time and making poverty wages. You have 1,600 vacant houses. It's insane. They said, let's save a few dollars and pump the water in from the Flint River. Decades and decades of being ignored. Americans are finding themselves in a desperate situation. They're a new state. A lot of talented people here, but you would never know because of the reputation we got. If you're an entrepreneur right now in America, the last thing you want to do is take risks. This is not a world I want to take risks. America is not the pillar of democracy and freedom that it was once seen to be. Here we are, naked in front of the world. It's a real tragedy.